Our next presenter is uh, Giovanni Tabor, and he's going to introduce us to kinetic music. And his uh, pitch is about connecting music with media. Take it away, Giovanni. Hey, can you hear me all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to be a, a uh, film composer like John Williams. Yes. But even back then, it seemed like such an unattainable dream. But why is that? Because music consumption has been higher than ever. In fact, 26% higher than in the last couple of years. It's because musicians aren't, uh, they aren't registering their music correctly, and they're not uh, administering their music. And let me tell you about how the first year I started as a freelance composer, I lost $10,000. So, uh, I started in undergrad as a uh, music educator. Well, I was going to music ed. And uh, I realized though that what I really wanted to do was write music. And so I went out on a limb and I started contacting people. And in the first two months, I got 80 projects, which was pretty cool. Uh, what I learned was there's a lot more to writing music for media than just film. There's also games. I did things for uh, audio books. Just things you wouldn't expect. But even with all those projects, I wasn't making a lot of money. And it was really hard to make a living. So I got together with colleagues, and what I learned was there are these people called agents who help you find <laughs> new projects. They help you uh, make sure you're not getting screwed with contracts and stuff like that. I learned that there are publishers that are on your side that manage your royalties, and that there are administrators that, after you've already written the music, they try to relicense it with new stuff and make long-term revenue out of it. But, so I did some research, I tried looking around for agents, but unfortunately, they never got back. So, you know, I asked teachers, where do you get agents? Uh, and it turns out there's a common phrase in the music world, you don't get an agent, the agent finds you. So in other words, you have to be famous in order to get one. <laughs> so I looked around for a publisher, and yeah, same thing. <laughs> they don't want to waste their time on somebody they didn't know. And if you don't have a publisher, you definitely can't get an ad. <laughs> so Here's the problem with that, though, because when people don't know how to register their music, they're missing out on a lot of money. Uh, when I would do work for a client, I didn't have a lot of budget, you know, 50 bucks, and it was enough to get by, but I had no idea that there was all of these performance royalties that were owed to me. And it turns out not many other people do either. And it makes a big difference when you're a musician and you make most of your living off of uh, live concerts because that's all you get other than tickets. So 
This is what Kinetic does for our artists. We uh, immediately register all the music for the performance rights organizations so that we can collect those royalties for them. Uh, we try to find uh, opportunities to license the music out after it's been written. And we try to actively administer it. Uh, we license it with commercial music libraries, we get it out, make it open. Uh, and we register it with YouTube's content ID service. So whenever somebody posts a video on YouTube with music, uh, YouTube pays a mechanical royalty to the artist. So, I know what you're thinking. Why wouldn't the artists just do this themselves after they found out? But it's time consuming and really difficult to do, unless you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, it's a lot like taxes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't a barrier to entry. I didn't want it to be something where we only help the top 10 artists. Uh, what we do is uh, we have a free model for most people. They get all the royalty collection and all the basics. Uh, but to get premium support, uh, well, priority support, uh, we have a professional plan for $30. Um, so, so far, if you're an artist, you've got a few options. Uh, there are the best ones, the traditional publishers, but unless you're famous, uh, you're not going to get them. Uh, instead, to fill that gap, there are companies like uh, CD Baby and SongTrust. Uh, they'll give you royalty collection, but that's it. They don't offer sync licensing, they don't offer administration. So we charge more, but our artists know that it's definitely worth it. Uh, here are some of the people that we've worked with so far. Uh, um, with uh, Sam, he is in Venezuela, and we helped him register with an American hero, and uh, now he's uh, ready for collecting royalties. Uh, so, so far, uh, we're very much still on the MVP stage, uh, but I'm really looking to raise some capital to uh, turn it into a real business. Uh, right now, it's just me. I'm a full-time student, and it's uh, been hard to manage all of this at the same time. But um, I'm really interested in what you think of the idea, and uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Interesting thing is that, so it's free to start, but there is a um, commission on all of the projects, so uh, it's not totally free, it's, it's premium. Uh, who, who's vetting the, the, media, the, the music before pushing it out to whatever channels you're going to distribute this on? Uh, what do you mean by that? So if you're, you're effectively cutting out an agent in some cases, right? And part of the job of an agent is his, his or her reputation of providing quality content to whoever is publishing it, right? So who is that, who is vetting that music? Is it other artists? Is it people within your team? So
such that you have a high quality product for the people consuming? That would be our team, yeah. We would uh, get the responses back and try to find the right thing for them. Like, there's a lot of uh, music libraries out there, but for a director, uh, you don't have time to search through a thousand different songs to try to find the one you want. So, uh, yeah, that would be our team. Kind of, yeah. We don't replace BMI, but uh, most artists don't even know what BMI is. So uh, we handle it all. So um, basically, in my mind as a composer, I want to write music. I don't really want to be registering all of my 300 songs every year for royalty. made an interesting comment just now. And, and I agree, great presentation. So, this is your company, you're going to build this company, but you just said, you want to be a composer. <laughs> so how do you, what do you, what do you, what do you really want to focus on? Yes, so, that's a funny question. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, I want to get this thing going. This is something that, it's service that I really want, but uh, I don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life, so. And long term would be to find somebody else to replace me. So, how much is Bill already? In this web or whatever, always working for the three people we saw? Yeah, it's all up. I mean, uh, right now the thing we're really lacking is just staff. Um, I'd like to work a little bit uh, on technology, making it automated so an actual person doesn't have to fill out all the forms and stuff. But um so yeah, right now, so if, if I sign up and submit you five songs, you are actually behind the scenes filling out stuff to submit it to BMI. Yeah. 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 Right now. That's all a manual process for you on the back side. Yep. Um but that would be automated later on. And, and so the example he gave What's the potential revenue for him and for you on this song? I mean, if, if one of his five is good, maybe not great, good, what, what's the potential that he could have? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard you saying that. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if it was good, what kind of money could he make and correspondingly, what kind of revenue would you generate off of? So let's say uh, you're an artist and you're playing on Church Street, for example. Uh, you write the, the song yourself. Uh, you would let us know that you wrote the song, that you played it at a certain time, and then we would tell ASCAP, like, hey, look out for these royalties. We'd register the music with them. And then what would happen is uh, the Church Street Marketplace would pay a royalty as a venue to ASCAP, and then ASCAP would bring the money to the artist. So we're a music publisher. So the royalties get split 50-50 between the artists and the publisher. So we'd be getting some of those royalties too. But they would be getting royalties that they didn't even know existed. So. If, if you had a lot of people sending you music, <laughs> like this afternoon, you get hammered. Everyone here wants to publish with you. You get 2,000 songs. They're really, really bad. <laughs> Do you publish them anyway? You vet them and you say, well, I don't care. I'm just going to hook them up. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so... The, You're not going to make any money because nobody's going to buy what I write. Yeah, but what if you went down church street and played your song? Or at a bar? Or at an open mic, for example? That's still a performance. So, okay. you're still getting that performance royalty, whether it's an open mic or at the point. Okay, that's interesting. That's weird. Like, oh, this is that I was going to say. One more. Right. Say right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, she takes her terrible song by her own admission, <laughs> <laughs> goes to an open <laughs> mic on Church Street, okay, and, and sings it. And then you just said, oh, you'll get a royalty. Who is actually paying 
that who is starting that revenue stream called the royalty payment? Is the bar is the bar owner and the venue owner paying the royalty? Is she paying the royalty? Is she <laughs> paying your own song? Where's We're paying the yes, so in our great crisis. That's <laughs> what it's <laughs> Basically, it's yeah. Tonight. So uh, the venue would be paying that. And that's negotiated by ASCAP. So once you let them know the ASCAP guy calls the you know the plan and says, Hey, this artist play at this time, how many people were there and they work that way. So um, okay. it was really good.